morning, afternoon, or evening, beautiful people. This is the good brother Mike coming back at you again on The Perfect Play. Um, today we are going to be engaging in a really interesting conversation around college enrollment. But before we even get there, I would like for my co-host, my marketing rep, our special guests and coaches to introduce themselves. Hey, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It is I am C. Will, the coach. Lovely to be here today, man. It's good to be here on this good day. Good to see you all again, hear you all, and checking in for this. But as we know, none of this will be marketable without a professional team from our actual team. So introduce yourself, marketing rep. What's up? Hey, hey, Perfect Play. This is Victoria representing Peer Forward's fabulous marketing team. And I'm excited to be here with you all, but I'm even more excited that we're joined today by two very special guests. So I'm going to pass it over to our two guests, Ashley and Siraj. Ashley, we're going to pass it over to you first to introduce yourself. Perfect. Thank you so much, Victoria. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Ashley Neal. I am a college counselor and a teacher in New Orleans, Louisiana. I am also an alum of Peer Forward, and I'm just really excited and delighted to be here. All right. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Siraj Ba. I am Assistant Director of Admissions and Financial Aid at Manhattan College. I am also an alum of uh, Peer Forward. I uh, did my workshop 2007, and I'm really happy to be here to talk to you all. Um, so definitely happy to be here again. Thank you for uh, Peer Forward for letting us um, utilize this platform. All right, all right, all right. Thank you. Thank you both. So here's a fun fact about both of these guests. As you know, at Peer Forward, we believe in the idea of family, and this is truly a family affair today. So to get our conversation started, just know that these folks on the call, we go back maybe shy of 10 years, a decade, if not more. Um, so they've been around for a long time. And the question I ask may make them have to throw down memory lane, but let's see if they'd be able to answer. See, you want to talk to us about what our question for the day is? Yeah, man. So it's time for our check-in like we do at every training, every meeting, every huddle. Um, and so today, the question is, drum roll, please. <laughs> Question of the day, what was your most memorable freshman experience? Ashley, would you answer for us? What's up? <laughs> so let me just say this. I went to the best university in the land, HBCU, Alcorn State University. A for Alcorn, S-T-A-T-E-U, University, A-S-U. Ow. Home of the Braves. And my entire college experience was memorable. But if I had to pick one thing from my freshman year, um, that won't escape my brain, it would probably be cow tipping. Anyone know what cow tipping is? Okay. Oh, I didn't from cars. No. <laughs> cow. Like a moo. Cow tipping. So I'm from the south side of Chicago when I made the choice to go to Mississippi for school. And so if there's anyone that is familiar with um, Mississippi or the rural Mississippi, it's really country, incredibly country. It's really dark. There aren't a lot of street lights, and Bambi would come on our campus uh, periodically. And uh, we had a farm in our backyard of our university. And so I went with some upperclassmen. They're like, we going cow tipping. And I'm like, cool, I'm bored, let's go. And we legitimately went in the barn, and while the cows were sleeping, pushed them over. That is awful, I know. Um, and we pushed them over because they don't have knees, I think, so it was hard for them to get up. And we just thought that it was just the funniest thing ever um, until we went back and that cow wasn't asleep and kicked the mess out of one of my classmates. And so um, lesson learned, I have never gone cow tipping again. And that memory has oh. made my mind. So <laughs> that would probably be <laughs> experience. Cow tipping. Cow tipping, yes indeed. Wow. That's a been on whole foes. Wow. <laughs> Only time I heard about cow tipping was the movie Cars. That's what I was saying. I was like, I know this. Right. But, hey, that, that's a good one. That's a good one. So, Ron, okay. tell us what's up. What's your most memorable freshman experience? Oh, wow. So, I actually uh, have two. So, the thing about, you know, I grew up in the city. I grew up in the Bronx, New York. And so, I went to Sage College of Albany, uh, about an hour. Well, actually, two hours away from New York. And so, one of the first thing I, my experience that is more very memorable was how clean uh, upstate New York was compared to New York City. 
because uh, New York City is very gritty. So I remember when I first moved in, and I remember the grass was cut, like even felt bad to even litter. That's how bad it was because New York, everyone, you know, you eat something, you can throw it away. No one really say anything. But I come to this college and it's neat, it's clean. You barely see anybody outside. And I was walking around and I'm like, should I drop this on the floor or not? So, and I'm like, wow, I can't even do that over here. So I just felt this guilt. Uh, but that was the, that was the, my first experience of how neat it was uh, to go upstate um, outside of the city. The other thing for me was uh, the food. So when you go to New York City public schools, the food isn't great at all. You know, they give you the same thing. They give you milk. And when you go to college, you get cheeseburgers. You get all like I remember we had Pizza Hut. So you, all you can eat buffet style. And, you know, I gained some I gained the freshman 15. But I was able to lose that over the, over the time of my uh, college career. But those were the two things most memorable for me my freshman year college. And that's real. Going to some new communities is always a shocker, whether you've been there before or not. You just see different things about it. So thanks for that check-in, Siraj. Hey, last but not least, man, Mr. Spicer, tell us what's up. What, what was it like down at Morehouse freshman year? What's going on, listeners? Tim checking in from the backseat. I got a good view, though. That first time I walked into what was known as – fried chicken Wednesdays and it uh it was a different atmosphere not just because it was food because it was a DJ it was partying in the cafe serving up fried chicken so that was definitely one of my favorite moments of uh freshman year just being in college hey fried chicken Wednesdays all right that's what's up that's what's up hey the south y'all do it different down there man it's hey, it's you. Stuff. you know it's how y'all do it all right, we got time for one more check-in. So I'm going to pitch it over to my girl, Victoria. What's up? How was that freshman uh, best memory up at uh, Preston? Most memorable. Um, I'm going to say that it's uh, my freshman year when it was parents' weekend for parents to come visit. And, you know, I'm from Texas, so my mom flew all the way from El Paso, Texas to Princeton. And um, it was just nice. It was nice to have her there. We kind of felt like we were at Hogwarts together. And so it was nice to have that moment with my mom and just, you know, really appreciating uh, being there at that school. So... Um, and it was just fun to have my mom on the East Coast for the first time. It was really exciting for both of us. So that was definitely the most memorable moment. Hey, that's real. Shout out to Team Gryffindor up there. You know, but thank you all for checking in like we always do. Listeners, peer leaders, parents, advisors, principals, remember that you too can lead check-ins with your friends and family. It's a good way to gauge how they're feeling during this time. So make sure that you check in. If not today, then sometime this next week. Hey, Mike, tell us what our discussion is about today. Yeah, let's get it, man. So I'm, I'm super excited. Uh, the nerd in me is re really riveting to get engaged in this conversation. But we'll be talking about something today all of us experience or have experienced and or will experience um, in our Pair Forward family. And that is the college enrollment process, right? And when we talk about the college enrollment process, often we think of just applying to college. But it's so much more than that. It's applying. It's making sure that after you apply, you accept the institution. And then more, most importantly, it means actually getting on campus. So if you're uh, a peer leader and you already went through some of our summer workshops, you already know uh, we talk a lot about the five steps. We talked about it on several episodes. And most importantly, we, we talked about what happens after the college enrollment process on our last podcast. Um, and we really just want to take the time to talk to advisors, talk to peer leaders, talk to students of our, our partnership schools, and just anyone willing to listen about the beauty, ups and downs, the good, the bad, and the ugly of the college enrollment process. So to get our uh, conversation started, we're going to kick it back to our special guest to really get into the weeds of what this whole thing is and what it actually means. So what I want to do really quick is talk to Ashley Siraj in a, one or two sentences. Can you uh, just share with us your understanding of the college enrollment process and uh, let the folks know again, like where you're coming from, the school or institution you're working for. I'm going to start with Ashley. Thanks, Mike. Um, I am a college counselor as well as a teacher. I teach a college and career course at my school and I work with inner city New Orleans children with the college application process as well as their career. So we're just finding the most rigorous post-secondary uh, outcome that is best for each child. Oh that's what's up. Thank you so much for that Ashley. I, you're doing a great work and down there 
especially in Louisiana. I know it's much needed. Um, so, Rob, sir, would you give us a quick introduction of who you are, sir, and what you're doing right now? So, Siraj Ba, my name is I currently, again, I am the Assistant Director of Admissions and Financial Aid at Manhattan College. So, my job pretty much entails uh, recruiting. So, I recruit in the New York City area. So, that's my territory, all five boroughs. Uh, I go into the schools. I present to students about Manhattan College and what we offer in terms of majors, clubs, and activities, and things that students can really take advantage of uh, as a student at Manhattan College. And also, the back end, I review applications. I make decisions on applications, and I also help walk through students throughout the application process, uh, as well as the financial aid piece as well. Um, so that's one of my favorite pieces, part of the job actually, is just connecting with the student individually uh, and helping them kind of achieve this goal of getting accepted into college. All right, so team, man, I think it's, it's, it's without further ado, let's actually talk about uh, the time, right? Um, so Ashley, can you start us off by letting us know how COVID-19 has really reshaped your role in the way you interact with your students? Yeah, I'm like, I, I had to inhale, take a, a big deep inhale and exhale anytime I hear the name COVID-19, it brings on anxiety for me. It has reshaped our entire world, our society as we know it. And so um, for me, my piece is everything. And my piece needs to be aligned um, with everything I'm giving my energy to. And so um, it's reshaped my interactions with my children because I don't get to see them daily. In New Orleans, I don't have any family here. It's just my king and I and my my school is my family is is a part a huge significant part of my life i'm with my children more than their parents are and so to be away from them this long and i teach and i support and counsel 12th graders and the most prominent time of their life where we were going on a a senior trip and prom and graduation and senior night and senior awards it's just been very heavy and so the human piece of all of it, I think what I miss most is the human interaction. And so this virtual thing has been super beautiful for a lot of people, especially me. Uh, and social media has been an outstanding platform for me because that's been the way that I've been able to connect with most of my babies. I created a page called Miss Neil to you, spelled Miss M-S period. Neil, the number two, and the letter U. And all of my babies get on. We do so many things. I update them on scholarship updates. I am always giving them different tools and resources to help them um, with their post-secondary choices. It's, it's that time where a lot of students are uh, securing their space in different schools and I'm also doing some things to engage them as it relates to what's important to me. So I talked a little bit about it earlier, but, but COVID-19 is crazy and it could just really interrupt your peace and your sanity and my mental health is everything. And so I'm really big on juices and smoothies and yoga. Um, it's a lot of holistic ways to just um, make your insides feel good. Um, and so I have been cooking with my kids uh, on Instagram today at three o'clock. One of my babies and I, we're making smoothies and juices, and it's a competition to see who's look better, and Miss Neal is going to win. <laughs> so just different things like that to just let them know that I'm thinking about them, that I love them, that I'm here for them, that I'm rooting for them, um, and just to let them know that the entire world is proud of them. That's what's been going on. Wow, that's that's beautiful. Uh, I really appreciate you sharing that, highlighting the fact that as uh, educators, we also are being impacted and tired, but still you're staying faithful to the cause of uh, working with your students and really making sure they, they get what they need. Siraj, so can you uh, can you highlight um, what are some, some lessons you've learned and what are some things you uh, gained from uh, experience in this pandemic so far? No, of course. Um, so again, my role it, uh, relies on high level of interaction with students and families. Uh, and since this pandemic hit, has really uh, turned our world upside down. So, for example, for us, you know, the good thing in the admissions world, like we saw this coming and we started planning on how we can uh, transition remotely and still be able to do 
um, and have the level of impact uh, to our prospective students uh, if we were if we were like we're uh, in front of them. So we started really really creating different channels to engage prospective students uh, because in the spring for us usually is when we start recruiting, start really getting out there. Uh, recruiting for the rising seniors next year, getting in front of them, talking to them about the different colleges, the college options they have. Uh, but unfortunately, due to the pandemic, you know, that really changed things around. So we couldn't really go out there and really focus on them. So we had to create new avenues for them to really get to know us as an institution. So again, one part of the thing that really was changed is like admissions relies heavily on tours, like students being able to come on campus getting a tour of campus, getting a feel of the institution. Um, being that we weren't able to offer that, uh, we really tapped on our marketing team as well as we started utilizing heavily our virtual tours. So at least this way students can get a glimpse of Manhattan College, um, who we are, learn a little bit about the diff- you know the history of the college, the institution, and the faculty that we have on campus. Uh, but also we started to see that you know a lot of students are deciding on what college to go to without really getting to see it. So you can buy without really getting to know the merchandise really well. And so we, we did a lot of virtual uh, except the student day events for our students, um, that which really helped them, again, really engage with our faculty. But I think one thing we've learned is just to stay very flexible and, and adaptive, but also make sure that we are always available uh, for these students. Perfect. Thank you for that, Siraj. Um, and so just making sure that we um, address a big concern right now that's thinking about the college enrollment process, especially with our incoming freshmen and those who just graduated. Um, to my experts out in the field and on the ground, um, first I'm going to go to you, Ashley. How do you think that this will change the college enrollment process for the fall 2020 for those freshmen right now? It's already changed uh, a lot for the incoming freshmen. There are a lot of schools that are saying that they are going to continue virtual classes starting in the fall. There are a lot of schools that have waived a lot of the application deadlines and supportive documentations and uh, things that they would usually use for acceptances for schools. I know a couple of schools here in Louisiana have waived all ACT and SAT scores, which was really, um, which really uplifted a lot of my baby spirits because we were supposed to take another ACT test uh, the week after um, we found out that we would be out of school for COVID-19. I think that for some of them, I think the silver lining with this, especially if the schools are not on a physical campus, is that for, for some children that were interested in living on campus, they won't have room and board fees. And so that is some money that is sh- uh, taken off of their cost of attendance. Yeah, there, there are a lot of things that are going to a shift in our temporary normal, not our new normal. But that's just some, definitely want to hear a lot about what Siraj is doing at the university level. Yeah, true that, man. So thank you for that, Ashley. Siraj, could you tell us what's happening at the university level? Yeah, uh, absolutely. So one of the things that a lot of institutions are implementing is, uh, remember, we have the May 1st deadline, the national candidate reply deadline, when all students have to decide on what institution they're going to. Uh, So that has, for many institutions, that has been extended to June 1st. For example, Manhattan College, we are extending our deadline. So that's where it gives students more time to be able to, you know, work throughout this, these challenging times to really make, make sure they're making the right decision. Uh, the other thing also we're doing, we did, um, once this pandemic hit, Manhattan College took the initiative, especially in March, to reduce the deposit from $1,000 uh, for residents to six fifty. dollars and for commuter students to three three hundred and fifty dollars, uh, because we know that a lot of families and students are going to be hit financially. So we wanted to definitely make sure that we are lessening uh, the overall cost of them depositing to become Manhattan College students. The other thing also we are seeing 
uh, is that a lot of students are opting to stay closer to home. So we've seen a lot of students that were planning to go away now want to stay closer to home to family. Um, we're also seeing a lot of students requesting gap years, meaning that they, you know, they want to at least utilize this one year to do something else before they enter the college. Um, and also, the, finally, we are seeing also a lot of students who are opting to go to two-year institutions first before, you know, uh, attending to uh, a four-year institution because they feel like they don't want to, they don't want their first year to be 100% online. They rather might as well just go to a two-year school before, you know, they commit to a four-year institution. Uh, so those are some of the things that we are seeing um, across the landscape in terms of enrollment. Again, students co- staying closer to home, students op- opting for gap years, and students also looking at two-year institutions for the time being. So those are the things I wanted to definitely highlight. Thank you for that, Saraj. Those are all uh, right on the point and things that I'm hearing out in the field with students and what they're experiencing right now. Um, but first, I just want to thank you all for hopping on the call with us today and doing this podcast and giving us the information on what's actually happening um, in your various regions. And so as we talked about what the students are thinking about, we have this thing called You Ask and We Answer. So peer leaders and advisors have been given the opportunity to send in questions, um, what we like to say, call in to the episode. Uh, with specific questions for our special guests. And with that being said, I'm going to pitch my first one to Mrs. Siraj. How was the process um, for you in getting adjusted to dorming life? Thank you. Thank you for that question. Uh, so definitely adjusting to dorming life. And the good thing for me, I used to uh, be, a, well, I was an RA when I was an undergrad, and I also was a resident director when I was in grad school. Uh, one of the things I always tell students, you know, when it comes to adjusting to dorm life is, you know, setting the ground rules with your roommate, right? Once you once you go there and you meet that person, uh, set set those ground rules. Don't wait till things start happening and then you want to set them, but set them right there in the beginning. Um, and also, you know, some things that I think have been very helpful for students is also, you know, decorating your dorm room uh, to a way that makes you feel like you're at home. Right. Really taking the time to put things around the room uh, that really remind you of, you know, things that you are happy about, things that motivate you. Uh, So whenever you go in, go into that dorm room that, you know, you feel like you're kind of going into your space. Right. And also investing in good sleep. I always tell students, you know, in it, investment, because, again, sometimes depending on the dorm room, right, um, it could be communal. You can, you 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 know, you can have apartment style dorm room. But making sure that you're creating a space where, you know, you can be well rested. So that way, when you go to class, you're not tired, you don't feel stressed out. Um, So I think those are the things that I always tell students to do in terms of adjusting to the dorm life. Real, that's real, Saraj. Thank you for that, man. Yeah, one of the things I just wanted to add on that um, experience is also getting to know your roommate um, and also picking the right roommate. So various colleges have different opportunities to meet roommates online. I hear they're doing it on social media now. So just be sure that you check out your roommate. Make sure you have some things in common because uh, that makes that can make or break your freshman year. And so with that, man, I'm going to kick it over back to the co- to host today. Mike, tell us what's up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, we're going to answer one more quick question. Spice, do you want to talk to us about what would it look like to have fun in college but also be involved and time managed effectively? What would it look like? I mean, it, it, it might look a couple different ways when you think about what success looks like for every student and and what people are really considering to, as far as their activities and what they're doing in college. I think uh, for me, I was a poli sci major, so I did a few, held a few leadership roles with the Young Democrats Association and uh, uh, other things with the education policy scholars, um, just to stay in my interest, but they were things that I enjoyed. Um, and just being able to manage that with with having fun, you know, planning for homecomings and, and you know, pledging the greatest fraternity in the noble land, um, Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated. But when you think about time management, you think about, Every is 24 hours and how do you manage your 24 hours? You know, so maybe for me, it was studying from Sunday to Thursday and then enjoying uh, and and, and relaxing and partying Friday, Saturday, and then getting back to it. But it's just creating good habits to to manage your time and uh, be about all of it. Nice, nice, nice. Thank you, thank you, thank you.
So I, I want to make sure that we are also acknowledging some uh, other great individuals and the work that, that's been happening in the organization. So I want to turn it over real quick uh, to one of our master planners, Victoria. Can you talk to us about what's going on in the org? Absolutely. Thanks, Mike. So um, one of the ways that we really wanted to connect you all with one, this podcast, but other resources for social media, some virtual plays for you to connect with your classmates is we put together a team assets page. Um, and this is a web page just for you, peer leader teams and peer forward teams, uh, where you can access some exclusive content we made just for you and just for the specific situation that we're going through right now where everyone's doing virtual learning. Um, and if you don't know how to access that page, please get in touch with your peer forward coach or your advisor. They should both have the info, the link and the password to that page. Um, and if you enjoyed our You Ask, We Answer segment today and you have a burning question you want us to answer, um, please feel free to send in your questions. You can reach us in our Instagram DMs, Facebook, Twitter, or you can send it directly to your peer forward coach. But we know you have questions and we really want to answer them. So reach out to us. Um, and lastly, if you really enjoyed this podcast episode, you've been listening to all our episodes. Um, one thing you can do now is, you know, just send it with, send it to a friend, share the episode with maybe you have a cousin who's about to start high school or is figuring out their post-secondary plan. Um, just send them a link, share out the link, make sure that the people that you're rooting for are getting the information that you're getting too. Um, and a podcast is a great way to spread that information right now that everyone has a little bit of extra time at home and some time to sit down and listen. Um, so I'll pass it back to you, Mike and Cornelius, to close out our episode. Nice. All right. So before we end today, I just want to make sure that we acknowledge some of the greatest individuals uh, known to man. So this week uh, marks teacher appreciation. It marks uh, college signing, which happened, uh, which happened May 1st. Um, and then we also have the, I, the reality of, of career signing day. So we just, we just want to acknowledge all of the students that have been working hard to get their information in, select the college, commit, um, even amidst everything going on. But more importantly, we also want to acknowledge the teachers, faculty, and staff that have been pushing students since the dawn of May. Uh, but no, seriously, since the opportunity um, of the school year started for years upon years, teachers have really been changing lives. Some of our, some teachers have changed our lives. So if you see a teacher, know a teacher, shoot them a text, send them some love socially, um, but keep the distance. Out further ado, the final question is, and the closing question is, in one sentence, what would you want to leave our rising seniors that are going into their senior year in high schools and students that are going to become college freshmen? What do you want to leave them with? Some words of hope, um, some affirmations. Just share the love that you want them to receive right now. So I'm going to ask that we also shout out our nurses for National uh, Nurses Week um, amidst the COVID-19 piece. Um, but again, I just want to make sure we answer this, this final question as we're closing out. Uh, what are some words of wisdom in one sentence do you want to leave to students? Yeah, man. So I am C. Will, the coach here. One thing I would say to students um, going through this pandemic right now uh, is really just stay focused, keep your faith, um, and understand that whatever, when you were in your right mind, when things were going well, the ideas and the wants that you had for yourself to continue on that path. Obstacles may come, um, but that does not mean you can't overcome them. Thank you, C. I'd like to go next. This is Ashley Neal. Um, what I'd love to leave everyone that is listening with are some tools that help me. I believe in the power of manifestation, speaking things as though they are. And so that's why every day I wake up, I say that this is not my new normal, but this is my temporary normal. It is 2020 right now, and 2020 equals perfect vision. And so everyone that is currently in 2020 are visionaries. And especially if you are a part of the class of 2020, you are absolutely a visionary. And so envision what it is that you want for your life, manifest it, and continue to affirm yourself. You got the whole world behind you. I'm rooting for you. Peer Ford is rooting for you. Your teachers are rooting for you. Your families are rooting for you. And you got this. And this is Siraj. Uh, and one thing I want to leave the, the students with is definitely to, uh, to value their background, their perspective, their compassion, and their perseverance. Uh, you need to value all four of those. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, for myself, uh, I would definitely say 
man, just just be the love you want to receive. And it's, it's, it's hard times, but we, we will make it and we shall make it. Um, without further ado, Spice, do you want to add some words of wisdom before we close out? No, I mean, it's just an awesome opportunity to see the depth of the Pier Ford alumni and uh, how far back just the, the lessons go. And it's it's been really good to have our special guests on and be able to speak to the college enrollment process uh, for what our students are experiencing now. So it's a big thank you to, to them. And um, they, they, they summed it up perfectly. Awesome. So family, till next time, fight the power and keep the peace.